Hello folks, in today's video I'm going to show you two techniques to get a rain effect in your Blender renders. What I've got here is a very simple cityscape scene that I set up and I wanted to introduce some rain to this scene. Okay, so let's go with easy method of adding rain to your scene. As you can see I have a, a different demo scene for this just to make the workload a little bit easier on my computer while I'm recording. First of all, uh, the way the easy effect works is by shift A adding a plane into the world and what we want to do if I just go to top view is bring that all the way over to our camera. Let's just make sure it's on roughly the same height as the camera at the moment and let's scale it up. Uh, quite a bit and what you want to add to this just so it's easier you could manually rotate to align with the camera using gadgets uh, or to make it easier you could just add a simple object constraint up in the constraints tab add object track 2 once you're there you can do the eyedropper to camera making sure that the axis it's tracking is minus Z and Y. That's what worked for me in this example. How do we start this process? Well, this is close enough to the camera. We make sure it's all set up. And then we want to do is, what we want to do is add a material. And um, we can name this material rain, at which point we want to switch to the shading workstation, or you can just adapt this workstation to your liking. But we want the shading workstation. I'm going to change it ever so slightly. I need a. I need at the bottom is probably the timeline for this example because we want our rain to be changing over time. And so at the moment, what we've got, we turn this transmission all the way up so it's see through. Or at least it will be. Um, I'll tell you what, for this cube, let's add shader and just change it to red just so when we look through the camera and see it so we want transmission all the way up and also want the ior for our water 1.333 recurring that's the index of fraction for water speaking so how do we go from here well the first key thing in order to make rain droplets is a noise texture so so what we're going to do is we're going to be shift a which is the add search for a noise texture once we have our noise texture you're going to want to make sure you have node wrangler which is a built-in add-on enabled so make sure you've got node wrangler enabled you go to preferences you go to add-ons search for node make sure node wrangler is enabled at this point what you can do with node wrangler enabled is control t on our noise texture which assigns it a mapping node and a texture coordinate node um, what is simpler than using the generated coordinates is uh, uv coordinates for this plane we pump that into the vector um, and what we want, if we just view this at the moment, what we have is a simple noise texture. We want to convert this into what looks like rain droplets. So, and what you want to do is bring your noise texture down to 2D level. Make sure your detail is up. Your distortion is also at around 12 to pop your X scale up. And that's how you end up with this kind of almost wooden looking texture. You can make it thicker or thinner. You can bring down the distortion or bring the distortion up to make those lines a bit more obvious. And um, what we then need to do is we can either have a color ramp, which is personally the way that I like to do it, or we can have 
a um, mapping node, but color ramp will work nicely. We want to swap the values. We want to bring white all the way to the left and black. You kind of want to just bring the contrast up, maybe tweak the distortion a little bit. And what you'll end up with, if you play around, is you end up with these white streaks. Is kind of what you want. Um, again, you're going to have to play around with the settings. It depends on the size of your plane. It just depends on quite a few factors. What you'll end up with is this kind of arrangement for your, effectively your raindrop. Um, again, tweaking the color ramp values brings in more raindrop or fewer. And if you pump this into your base color, of your BSDF and you bring that into the surface. Okay, so once you put this into your color, it gets assigned as the main factor for the color in your plane. And if we put this into the alpha, so what we need to do, because the alpha doesn't work straight away, we have to change the blend mode to alpha blend. There, see suddenly we get these raindrop like effects. What you can also do, which is a good idea, is also pump this color into the mission, which means your raindrops, it may not be as uh, realistic, but your raindrops will suddenly have a little bit of lightness to them. Uh, you could pump up the emission strength as well. Um, but you'll also notice it's currently static, nothing's happening over time. How do we animate these raindrops over time. Well, what you'll see if you tweak one of the location values, it will depend on your setup and the way that you've done it, but you'll end up with this moving up and down motion. So you can put that to zero. And for me, it's the X value. If I move the X value to plus, so I keep adding to the X value, I end up with this rainfall effect. So if I put that back to zero, so what I can do, we need a driver for that. We can have, what we can do is get a value node. So that's just a straightforward value. Um, and it's a float and we can actually put in hashtag frame. So what that does over time, if I press play, you'll notice within reason it will add the frame. Now we can actually just slow this effect down by doing frame, hashtag frame, uh, divided by, let's say, 30. And that will slow that effect down. But we can't just shove that straight into the vector because this is just a value node. And what will happen is if we put that into our vector for location, all three values, x, y, z, for this mapping will get translated over time. We do not want that. We only want the x value. So how do we do that? We need a separate x, y, z node. Once we put this in here, that obviously applies the value, but then we can just take the x, plug that into our location. And we get slower raindrops. If you could do frame divided by five, get slightly faster raindrops, and that will maybe get you the effect you want uh, over time in your scene to get a few raindrops. Again, if you tweak the contrast, you'll get more raindrops coming in. You can change the distortion factor and that will change how straight the lines are over time and tweak the scaling to your liking and you'll get nice, easy rain effect for your camera. And again, that will just repeat ad nauseum. Okay, so how do we start with this? So let's have exactly the same scene. Let's get ourselves just into our normal layout mode. And let's bring in Shift A. Let's just bring in a mesh. It really doesn't matter what you use for, for mesh. Uh, we could all of these to zero. And um, it can be any mesh you like, really. So we just bring that in. We can rename it to rain geo nodes and then what we need to do is go to the geo nodes workstation item and then we simply press new 
Again, this could be a rain geonodes object, which gets assigned to the plane underneath it as a modifier. But first of all, what we want to do is take this plane and we want to distribute some points. So we can search for that. Shift A, search, distribute points on faces. So let's take the one face that the plane has, or rather actually two, and let's put some points on there. And so far, they look like that. They don't seem very much like uh, rain. But let's first of all pump up the number to something like 400. It's worth saying this effect, maybe about 100. This effect will be slightly more taxing on your computer than the previous one. So a slightly harder way of doing rain effects. Geonodes will be slightly more taxing. For those that have um, computers, um, more or less like mine, they don't have a lot of... We want to instance something on these points. At the moment, they are just points. They don't do anything. So we want to instance on points. You end up with a load of inputs in here and a load of outputs, and everything disappears. Because we are not instancing anything at the moment. This is entirely empty. So want to do is we would like to instance a sphere or an icosphere to be exact and it's going to have a very very small radius because if I show you just plug that into the instance input ah they're very big and massive we actually want very 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 small uh, items so if this is in meters we want to Two, so that should be millimeters. Uh, you could put them a little bigger if you want to. But that's what we end up with a little nice distribution of uh, icospheres. Uh, you could do a couple of subdivisions. I wouldn't do more than, say, three if you have a low power computer. Mine, they low powers. We bring this over here. What we're going to do here is shade it smooth because. That makes them look nice, So now they're shaded smooth, but they're low poly because we don't need them to be high poly at this point. They're not raindrops, they are just circular drops. Water, how are we going to make them raindrops? Well, we are going to stretch them. Now, the best way to do this that I found in Geonodes is to stretch them on a scale. So which scale do we want to be using? We don't want to do them that way. Um, just bring that back to one. Don't want to do them that way either. We need to stretch them this way. I want to get kind of stretch that gives you an indication of a raindrop over time. And I found that something like 75, 75 to 100 is about the range you need. I'm going to stick it on 80 for now. But uh, that's how you get raindrops to be instanced on the point. Now, what do we do from here? You'll notice not only are they below, we bring them up slightly, but they're not falling. They're not really doing anything over time. In fact, let's bring up the timeline. They are just sitting still. Absolutely nothing going on. So we need to translate, transform these instances over time. The way you do that is with a node called translate instances. And you'll notice we can bring it up and down on the z-axis, which is kind of what we want over time. But we want to do it per instance. And the way that you do that over time is you need to assign kind of a random value over time to the z-axis. So what we're first of all going to need is a random value which spits out, at the moment, a random value between 0 and 1. Um, this will be assigned to the Z rotation, so if we put that in, you can actually see what it's doing. 
the moment it's doing it x, y, and z. So the way that we want to change that in GeoNodes is a combine x, y, z node. We want to be outputting a vector to our translation. And this value here should only be affecting z. And you can see suddenly we get a distribution of each instance on an axis. That's quite interesting. And we can stretch that over time. So what you can actually do if you pump this up to say five, you'll get a nice flow. There is one thing I've forgotten, and I'm wondering if any people will notice. But here we go. What we need to do. Because we're in GeoNodes, we need to set a material, otherwise the material that we want will not be applied. So we can apply, let's say, let's make a new material. And all we need to do is just whack up the transmission, maybe change the base color. Right. And again, change that ORI. O I O R. Recurring. And if you wanted to back up the emission, so what we've got is material O2, so we just assign material O2 to And that should be rather nice. We can't. We've got blue raindrops. We can change that to white. You can change it to whatever color you want. You can have purple rain. If you want. But again, the problem that we have is that this is not falling over time. Change. Over time, what we do is take our scene time, which is similar to what we did before. We could do it in seconds or we could do it in frames. And we probably to bring this down over time. So we don't want a straight adding of the value. But if we do that, Let's just say we do this and we bring the seconds in and we add seconds. It's going to keep going plus. We need minus. So what we also need as well as an add node, which is going to add the seconds to uh, the random value over time for each one individually, we need to bring this down and do a, another math node. So let's do shift this, bring that over here. And we want everything to be minus so we can multiply it by my notes we can do minus five i think is what i did before to match the five we got there and then it all falls that's what it does over time at the moment how do we bounce that around so we are falling and then falling and falling how do we repeat this animation well, what we need to do, as well as adding our random value and our scene, scene seconds, so we've multiplied, we've effectively taken the seconds and done them by minus five, so they are falling by five over time, and we've added that together. What we then need to do is, there's a very useful node under math again, and we can wrap around so what the wrap will do is if we do a maximum of zero is this is outputting random numbers from one to five and it's kind of doing it over time with the other calculations so if we then give it five as minimum and the maximum being zero once it reaches when any number reaches zero over time which is what this will do it's going to work its way down, translate downwards on the z-axis over time. When it reaches zero, it snaps back up to five for that end of the range. Rule. So what does that end up looking like? It looks like rain. And that's just a very useful way of producing a rain effect. What you may want to do, it's looking at the object, but essentially you get quite a nice, smooth rain effect going on, actually physically in your scene. And it, uh, 
produces rather a nice effect. And it's a bit, a bit more difficult to use than the shader version, but you end up with a lovely way of producing rain for your scene. If you have liked this tutorial, please do give a subscribe to the channel. It helps out a lot. And if you have any questions or if you'd like to contact me, please put a comment in the description or you can find me on my Twitter. I'll be doing a few more tutorials in the future for things like this. I wish you good luck in your Blender endeavours and I'll see you next time.